The soap has fallen on the floor. Pick it up. Don't stare at it. Take it in your hand and see the suds clinging stubbornly to its rounded corners. Those suds persist. That scent, honey, that's what the soap smells like. That's what it contains. The product of bees, the fruit of their labor. Bees communicate in order to make this sweet sap. People communicate to bring it to market, to take it, hope, and mix it with oils and oats, infusing its essence to that fragrant brick. Pick it up, smell it. I know things seem helpless. I know you want it to end. Cut off the TV, close the book, but just pick up the soap. That's it. That simple move. Bring it to your nose. That scent. Inhale beauty through your nostrils. The beauty of those bees. The beauty of the market, the water, the air. The light painting glimmers on those transparent spheres. People make beauty. Bees make beauty. You make beauty. It is all here. Waiting for you. Pick it up and rise. The voices in my head are so funny. You're funny. Funny looking. What you look like doesn't matter, doesn't it though? It's what's on the inside that counts. <laughs> I try not to pay attention to them too much, but they're always there sharing their opinions. Have you considered straightening your hair? Curly looks funny. See, even you think she's funny looking. I'm just saying it would help to be taken seriously. Straight hair looks more serious. Straight hair is beautiful. Is it? I think she's more cute than beautiful. You can be cute and beautiful. Can you? Sometimes I feel like they're winning. We are winning. Definitely, we, we always, always win. win. I'm sorry, were you even competing? Of course she's competing. We all are. Some of us have to. You don't have to. Only if you want to. Sometimes I can't breathe. I feel like I'm drowning. That's a panic attack. Just breathe through. She said she can't breathe. It's in her head. Drowning. She can't even swim. Who can't swim? It doesn't matter, honey. Hang in there. Are we swimming now? I'm drowning in their voices. I don't understand why we're swimming. You just are. Don't be so dramatic. It's better to be smart than talented. You can be both, can she? She's very smart. Why focus on anything else? They're always there. But I try to swim through them. Keep going. You can do it. I work to swim through their words and their thoughts and their suggestions. I push against their current. I swim and I swim and I swim. Hello and welcome to Flight 2023 with nonstop international service to Cape Town. Congratulations as you were on the first flight since the end of the pandemic. Yes, please take a moment to fasten your seatbelts, therefore your safety. Like vaccination. Vaccines, man. We owe much of this new day to those little shots. Anyone here an anti-vaxxer, protested the COVID vaccine, go ahead and ring your call button. Ah, uh, thank you. Now we know who won't be getting food trays on this 18-hour flight. Oh, all, right, man. all right, now, please give your full attention to the video demonstrating our safety features. Ever thought we'd be able to go out into the world again without masks? I was a teacher when the pandemic started, and my little second graders hated wearing them. So we had Ladybug Day to cheer them up. We brought all the kids out to the grass and released boxes full of ladybugs. They chased them and laughed and tried to fly through the air. Their little faces lit up from the magic around them. God, that was the last time I saw Luisa and Carlos. They were teachers too. She taught math and he taught music. They were like a family to me. And they had a pool party for their wedding years ago, and we danced to Janelle Monet as we ate pickles in their pool. <laughs> Carlos got COVID first. And then Luisa. They fought it for weeks, and we even thought that they might pull through. They were holding hands when they took their last breath. I, 
I quit the next day. Couldn't go back into that school building. Felt safer traveling through the sky trapped in a tube with recycled air than being in a classroom and being home where I can't hide from all the sadness. Weird thing about feelings though, no matter how far you run, they still find you. In the event of decompression, an oxygen mask will automatically appear. Like magic. Coming out of COVID, I think we all could use a lot of magic. This part isn't on your safety card. Everyone, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and picture ladybugs. <laughs> no, come on, do it with me. Even you anti-vaxxers. Flight attendants, please prepare for takeoff. All right, all right, I'm done. Oh, 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 and to the guy that stood behind me in the grocery store last July and yelled at me that coronavirus was fake, I hope you are well. sweatpants from the waist down, so coming here also forces me to pull it all together so I don't look and feel like some bizarre Victor Frankenstein creation following a magician's saw blade accident. I don't know how I just thought of that. <laughs> but coming in here each day makes me feel whole, even if it's just for a few minutes. And you're so nice. Every day you ask me how I'm doing, and every day you make me feel whole. And look, my venti quad non dot extra hot upside down half sweet karma macchiato. Maybe the careness of Karen drinks to ever be conceived, but every day you make it without a hint of contempt. Thank you. Thank you all. I guess sometimes you just never know. <laughs> shirt and pants on, find my socks and shoes, eat breakfast, get ready to leave. I do all these 
just as the person next door might do, or the person down the hall, or the person in the next state. I am human. We all work hard for our money. Too hard. Trying to make a dollar, trying to keep our bellies full, trying to keep our head dry, our feet warm, trying to keep a smile on our face and on the face of those who have trusted us to ensure their well-being. I do all these things before I go, just as everyone else, except I don't get to leave behind the fear. Sure, I can smile, laugh, joke, talk to people and act like it's not there, but it's always there. Anywhere I go, everywhere I go, I notice it. I feel it. And if it isn't evident who I'm speaking about, this is for my black men, men of color, and my black women, women of color. Don't be afraid. They hate to have you believe it's better to be afraid than it is to be angry. It's better to hope for change than it is to demand change. It's better to be forgiving than it is to be radical. It's better to have faith than it is to have a plan. But by God, I have both. Imagine going into a store for one thing, but talking yourself out of it because you're tired. Not tired physically, but tired of having to go through the stress of people staring at you, at you as if you don't belong. Security watching you, or in some circumstances where they idly follow you as if you don't notice. But it's hard to miss when you can move from one end of Walmart to the other and you still notice them there. Imagine being afraid of someone else's irrational fear. Hey! Hey, brother man, why did you let them off the hook? What hook? You said they fear you. They do. They hate you. They fear what they don't understand. They hate what they were taught to hate. Then tell us we're wrong for being angry about it? For being forceful about it? Militant? About it? Radical? They want us afraid because then we'll retreat. We'll run, but I ain't afraid no more. I can see that, but I don't want to be angry because I don't want to hate them back. I'm just- I don't hate them, I'm just- I'm just, I'm just tired. tired. Hey y'all, my topic for today's podcast is forget every goddamn thing I told you in last week's podcast. Uh, my topic last week, you'll recall, was the dangers of dehumanization, which I said was the single most significant driver of violence at our nation's capital. It was the primary tool used by the last administration to incite an insurrection and it is what caused the most vicious rioters to forget the police officers they were bludgeoning and the politicians they were hunting were human beings. So let's not do it either. I implored, please stop using any kind of word that dehumanizes anyone. I even quoted Nietzsche. Whoever fights monsters should see to it that in the process he does not become a monster. But then, <laughs> remember how I shrieked, oh no, I, I just did it. I called people monsters, you know, I was quoting someone else, but still, mea culpa. I felt so awful afterwards, I decided to apologize more on Twitter. The word monster, I began to write, says nothing about the person I'm attacking, but volumes about me. And do you see how easy it is? And do you see how much work we all have to do? But then I read your tweets. When people say, someone isn't my president, does that count? Is that phrase potentially dehumanizing? And is calling the people who stormed the Capitol traitors or insurgents dehumanizing? And if so, what words can I use instead? And that's when I realized that I'm apologizing for the wrong thing. It shouldn't be for using the word monster, it's for making you contort yourself so much to not use it. And my actual sin last week, and frankly, way before January 6th, was urging you to work on yourselves. And for asking you, you know, just this month alone, to check your language, to avoid shaming others, to constantly focus on self-improvement. I see now how narcissistic and self-indulgent, that is, this need we have to always be empathetic, compassionate, non-judgmental, 
and to believe that we're irreproachable, Jesus-like, Buddha-adjacent. It's ridiculous. This compulsion to redeem everyone and, and to look for the scared, wounded animal underneath, and for what? So that we can keep bragging, when they go low, we go high. <laughs> what does such self-righteousness accomplish when we are dealing with people carrying knives and zip ties and wearing Camp Auschwitz t-shirts? How does self-help help anyone in that situation? So here's my new message. In order to defeat a monster, you have to know it's a monster. Otherwise you let it get away. It won't thank you for your beneficence and marvel at how enlightened you are. It will laugh and spit at you and then slit the throat of a congresswoman who is actually trying to help. So are you ready to stop the easy, self-indulgent work of improving yourself and, and begin the much harder work of improving this country? Which one of you is ready? Am I losing it? Or are these the same nurses from the past few shifts in a row? I don't know. They all look really familiar. When I feel the elephant on my chest settling in, getting comfy and bearing all of this weight on me, I like to imagine what's underneath all of the nurses' PPE layers. Each layer that they gain is another part of themselves that they've lost. There goes Mexico. There goes that master's program starting in the fall. There goes his declaration to the world that yes, his body is in fact his own, thank you very much, and he's going to go dance with a professional company now, Lincoln Bio. There goes her plan to finally ask out that cute girl at the library. And all at once the elephant lets up. I can breathe again. It's last summer again. Me and Richie and Steve and the whole gang are up on that rooftop bar in Midtown. And we're all so close, breathing onto and into one another so deeply. And it's a celebration of life and intimacy instead of a federally chargeable offense. And I'm beautiful again. Everyone is saying so. And I'm wearing my favorite lipstick, so my lips are blue. But now someone is saying her lips are blue. It doesn't sound good. And it's not the rooftop music keeping tempo with the rhythm of my heart, but instead it's these screaming machines here in the hospital. And all of us nurses, all of us go running because we have yet another corona patient to save, but my legs aren't moving because I'm stuck in this bed and oh no, the patient is me. None of that comes out though. I don't have any breath left. And so they'll never know. So I close my eyes. On behalf of my tribe, I'd like to say miigwech for returning the land to our care. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry if my co-host gave the wrong impression. We're not giving back the land we own. I mean, we own it. Oh, weird. But I thought they said just now, well, what was it? Ah, yes. We recognize the unjust power taken from the tribe we are on right now. Yes, we definitely do. I feel so bad about it. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So, are you going to allow us to at least use the space? Whew. We could get into some tricky legal territory there, but we could discuss fees. How about advocating for some of our other lands back to the legislature? We can't disrupt our nonprofit. Speaking the indigenous language of this land in your events. Wish we could. Utilizing native businesses for your vendors. It's the cost, see? Hiring from the tribe. Promoting our causes. Learning about us? We really can discuss these type of things at a more appropriate time. I'm just trying to understand why you invited us here today. Well, 
For, for what we just did, we acknowledge that we stand on your land. So, you're acknowledging you own land stolen from us, which decreased our power and wellness as a community, but you're not following that with anything to give us power or wellness back. That's what I'm hearing? Mr. Hall, there's no need for that tone. I should remind you, you are a guest here. I was at a stoplight outside of my hometown when I noticed this black truck in the turn lane next to me, a few cars ahead. The truck started to reverse, inching closer and closer until it was parallel with my car. I looked over and I saw two men staring at me. They started yelling at me, demanding I roll down my window, assuring me they just wanted to talk. I looked away. And in that moment, I saw all the ways the cool girl version of me would handle the situation. <laughs> I saw her turn to the men, flip them off, and speed away. I saw her, I saw her roll her window down and yell a quippy comeback at the men. Something so concise and smart, it made them feel as vulnerable as I did. Cool girl doesn't care. <laughs> she lets it roll off her back, and she doesn't ever think about it again. She certainly doesn't write a monologue about it. The loud crack of the men throwing a rock at my window brought me back to the present, and I remembered that I am not cool girl. I'm good girl. And what good girl does is stare straight ahead while a deep blush spreads across her face and will the light to change color so she can cry without being seen. I've never felt like I had any real value in my family unless I embodied this ideal version of what a woman is supposed to be. There was no other role for me to fill. There was this unspoken rule that I was to take up the perfect amount of space, never be too loud or too quiet or too much, and put the needs of everybody else above my own. But I was simultaneously being told that I should be able to prevent any mistreatment I receive. That I'm weak if I can't fight back against two men in a black truck who are trying to take something from me. We, we don't allow women to be as nuanced as men. Sometimes we, we don't get enough sleep or we have a bad day and we say something kind of mean to one of our friends, but that doesn't make us mean. Sometimes we voice our thoughts and our feelings and our preferences, but that doesn't make us bossy. <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes we don't flip off the men harassing us at a traffic light and speed away without giving it a second thought, but that doesn't make us weak. It just means that we are prioritizing our own safety over being the spokesperson for all women. It shouldn't always have to be our responsibility to teach men how to treat us. Nobody should have to live under that kind of pressure. You're allowed to just, just stare straight ahead while the tears roll down your face and hope with all of your being that the light will change color so you can escape. You can be cool and good, but sometimes just a little bit rude and strong, but sometimes in need of a little bit of extra support and, and a good leader and brave, but sometimes a little scared. And about a million other things all at the same time. There are more than just two options. I've had to come out of multiple closets in my lifetime. When my school decided to put me in one, I decided enough was enough. I escaped the first two closets a few days before my 15th birthday. I told my mother that I liked women, and she looked at me like I had just kicked a kitten down a flight of stairs. 
the fear in her eyes reminded me of the fear in my own when I looked in the mirror one morning and I realized that I wasn't there. I mean, physically, I was there. The inside was still intact, but I didn't recognize this female on the outside. With a low and shaky voice, my mother whispered, Honey, I love you, but we have to keep this a secret. Now eat your egg salad. I hated egg salad. And for a split second, I hated my mother. I questioned the love she had for me. I questioned if she even knew me. Well, how could she? I was only beginning to know myself and realize what subconsciously I had always known. I was man. And although I'd be turning 15, ultimately this would be my first birthday. Because I refused to spend any more time celebrating the person of my past. Happy birthday to the cake and the name given to me at birth. The name I specifically told my mother I wanted to change. In that moment, I realized that if I couldn't be who I truly was, then there was no reason to be. My first birthday would be my last. And as I sat on my bed, contemplating the quickest way to go, my father knocked on the door. Your mother tells me you're having issues. I don't understand it, but I love, I love you. There was that L word again. I knew that a love full of limitations was no love at all. But hearing him say that forced me to look for my own love. And if I were to continue on this world, it had to be on my terms. My mother got rid of the name on the cake, but that was only the beginning of a fight that would last for years. Instead of allowing me to use the restroom with my peers, the school board decided to build a unisex bathroom out of a broom closet. That would have been great if I were unisex or a broom. I, I've come to terms with the fact that I may have to fight every day for the rest of my life, but I will no longer fight with myself. I am who I am. And I'm much too big to fit into anyone's closet. Yes, like out of the two of us, I'm the one who got dumped. I'm serious. He sat me down and took my hand. He'd made up his mind. He thanked me for the strength he took to leave me behind. Would you believe me if I told you about his dreams? An ancient elder council crowned him as the chosen one, whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> destiny to save us all from dark evil scorn his prophecy it wrote itself the day he was born he told me of a land below where demons fly free and because of all that nerd shit he was destined for greater than me
just don't want to lose the things I was before. I stretch out my fingers and I climb the sky as I step off the cliff and I pray I still fly. <laughs> the ground I hurl. I reach for the clouds as the demons unfurl. Forgive me, I am not a girl. Could you tell me who you are? Can you hear me better now? The mask, it kind of distorts the sound a bit, so. Hey, if this is the Grubhub delivery that I ordered last night that never came, I don't really want it anymore. It's way too early for loaded nachos, and honestly, it's not the kind of thing that keeps well, so. Are you still there? I'm gonna make the decision that that's a yes? You're choosing not to speak? <laughs> this is the first time I've spoken to anyone like this in, in months and you're not even speaking? I'll take it. I only talk to my coworkers about work or my family about work and if they're safe and, and my therapist. He was all like, how are you loving yourself? And I'm like, seriously, <laughs> how am I loving myself? Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> and my friends, who I always feel like the best version of myself with, were always so funny and smart and like, yes, girl, those jeans are working. Come on, quarantine fit. Are you still there? I caught my bangs the other day, just to feel excitement. And it, it made me happy. And it made me laugh. And so little does these days. You know, I'm, I'm missing a team meeting for this, for you. And I should really open the door right now. <laughs> Who knows, you could be the love of my life. I've just been a little afraid lately and I don't think it's about COVID even I think I'm just afraid I'll get my groceries delivered and I'll buy cute masks and I'll sit out on my front porch and strum my guitar and do the whole thing of putting on a show like the show and tell that I'm fine in isolation and I, I prefer it but I think really I'm just in this weirdo limbo. <laughs> and I feel like I'm just talking to myself right now. Hello? My grandfather was a dinosaur. Not in the literal sense, I mean, because that would be ridiculous. Although in some alternate dimension where the dinosaurs weren't wiped out by the comet, they would have evolved into a bipedal form. He was a dinosaur in the social sense, a quasi Luddite, but a Luddite straddling two different generations, too young to be a veteran and too old to be a hippie. 
but keenly aware of both sides and hurt that he couldn't belong to either. But he also had the benefit of hindsight or maybe distant sight. When you're not in the bubble, but you're outside of it, it can get a sense of the whole thing. Anyway, by the time I came along, firmly planted in a very specific generation, he felt the need to try to impress the values of both onto me without understanding the smartphones, social media, wokeness, and the easily triggered generation he was dealing with. He doesn't quite get the constant sensory overload, only made worse now because, hello, where are you supposed to go for an hour or two of nothingness to occupy your brain? No. He got the benefit of a simple, single-minded life, and I kind of resent him for it. No, I deeply resent him for it. So anytime he goes off on the problem with you kids, I try to picture him like one of those T-Rexes with those short little arms that you can't do shit with, but you don't know that because you're a T-Rex, so roar. Politics, racism, economics, climate change, the far right, the banning of TikTok, K-pop stands fighting back, Netflix and chill binging, and that despairingly horrible feeling of constantly feeling alone. That's what my generation has to deal with, what we're being asked to solve. And I can't help but feel that whatever my generation does now will only matter for whoever comes after us. We're so deep in the bubble, we don't even know where to start or how to step out of it. But it's possible, I think, that one thing will be fine. Though I'm still hoping for the great meteor to wipe it all clean. We just need to park the resentment we have for our dinosaurs and do the work. Otherwise, we'll be just as bad as them and ignoring the problem and expecting someone else to fix it. We need to force Evolve into more advanced bipeds and that just takes time. It just takes time. us all up down here. Wow. <laughs> I'm tenderheaded, but your hands are soft. I appreciate that. You don't pull it back tight like my mom. <laughs> I always thought I was the reason it hurt when I was getting it done by her. Man, I am glad your services are free, because, well, you got a softness that my mother just didn't have. She died two years ago. Cancer. Yeah, why well, I'm here. Don't, don't get me wrong, she's, she's my mother and I love her, but sometimes I think when she did my hair, she forgot the beauty of why I'm here. Like you, take your time. You're kind, you smile. All I got from her was complaints and cigarette smoke. Made me feel like I was broken. I, I think you're an angel, Miss Shirley Rains. That's my name, by the way. Angel. I heard you tell Noxima, that trans girl, she was beautiful. Made me smile. Her too. She came up to you asking for makeup and you fixed her all up. Made her look fierce. That's actually the last time I saw her here. Hope she's good though. Hope she got out of here. Nothing good comes from Skid Row. Except you, of course, and your services from heaven. <laughs> Get out of here. I don't care what you say, you are not broken. You're an angel as far as I'm concerned. That may be my name, but you are the MVP. Miss Shirley. 
Can you be my new mom? Monica Truinski here to say all the things Monica couldn't at the end of the century. Welcome back to my page. And if you're new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on my musings on all things sex, gender, and power related to that iconic 90s affair. Now, those of you who have been following me for a while, know that I've received a lot of backlash recently for an old blog post where I discussed this quote of Monica Lewinsky's. Sure, my boss took advantage of me, but I will always remain firm on this point. It was a consensual relationship. Any abuse came in the aftermath when I was made a scapegoat in order to protect his powerful position. Yeah, I know. This quote has aged like all of our MySpace accounts. But I have always found this statement extremely problematic, simply because of how it completely ignores the amount of power at play in that physical relationship. However, I was accused of silencing another woman's voice and denying her experience by speaking against it. It's been intense, to say the least. But I wanted to hop on here really quickly to give an update on the situation, and y'all, y'all, our girl has finally seen the light. Well, sort of. I now see how problematic it was that the two of us even got to a point where there was a question of consent. Instead, the road that led there was littered with inappropriate abuse of authority, station, and privilege. As you can see, it's a complete 180 from the position that she held for years, decades actually. And this video is not about saying I was right and she was wrong all along. But I did want to remind people that processing trauma takes time. Healing is not linear, neither is enlightenment. It was never my intention to dismiss Monica's perspective on what happened to her all those years ago, but I will always speak up on and about the truly insidious ways power is used to coerce, control, and compromise consent. And I encourage you, all of my amazing followers, to do the same. That's all I've got for you cuties today, but remember, consent is sexy, black lives matter, and your truth is your superpower. Go out there and shake things up! Hey, Matt, it's Jen. There's uh, something we need to talk about. before I go to bed. No, I didn't go outside today. Because I didn't want to go outside today, okay? Yeah, you know what, Mom? I get it. I'm so fine. I'm great, actually. 
Rebirthed into like, into like a butterfly with wings, and then you can just go wherever. And um, I'll stay here, uh, learning the choreo to girl group numbers from RuPaul's Drag Race, and um. Ignoring my ex-boyfriend who still texts me every day saying that he loves me and um, like worrying about the planet. Oh my god, the planet. I bet you're pissed. Um. Mantra. I am learning to be here on the ground. I am learning to see this space for what it is. Amidst all that does not make sense. One day I'll understand the world when I'm old. Um, it'll be okay. You never have to run away. You always have a friend to play. You never go out on your own. In me you will find a home. Home. From the back to the middle and around again. I'm gonna be there to the end. What can I do? A question that I ask myself every day. What can I do? Every hour, every minute, every second. A mountain of questions and doubts. Who am I to think that I need to change the world? Doubt is a doubt. Two doubts weigh a million. Weather systems are changing and becoming dangerous. 
alone looking at this part of nature that I love. What can I do? That I can't stand to lose. Snow-covered mountains, green hills, rivers. Somewhere here is the source of a river that feeds a huge section of the country. Only seeing the beautiful parts. What could I do? The ice cold water still holding on to the cold from the snow it just was. I don't see the pollution it gathers on its way south. I don't see it filling the trash. All I see is this. What can I do? I don't see the wells being fought over. I don't see the ocean slowly, slowly getting warmer. What, what can, can I, I do? do? Then I see it. The answer is here. What, what can, can I, I do? do? A river starts as drops of snow. Francisco Javier Vera Manzanera started protesting when he was six years old. The drops become trickles. He started the Guardians of Life with just six friends to fight for the environment. Trickles become streams. The Guardians of Life spread throughout different countries in South America. Streams become rivers. Their, Their voices, voices join Greta Thunberg in the Fridays for the Future movement. And the, the world, world heard. And rivers can destroy mountains. So maybe I can't save the world. Maybe I can't immediately destroy this mountain of doubts. But one act. Educating myself. Sharing that knowledge. One act. Speaking out. out. One act. Joining my voice to others. One act joins more acts. One voice joins more and together we can. It all starts with one simple question. What can I do? Thank you so much for seeing me. My first in-person session in over a year. You said it was an emergency? It is. Do you mind if we take off our masks? Just as long as we maintain at least 12 feet distance. Um, the length of these two broomsticks. Trapped in my apartment going on a year Following advice from Dr. Fauci and from science I've been devout in my compliance Still I live in fear of sickness and disease And the ease with which it can be caught So I bought a case of masks I even wear them all alone Which is all the time Cause there's no way I'm going out I'm in a human contact drought Many of my clients feel the same. But now I've reached a breaking point, I can easily go insane. I have this overwhelming urge rattling around my brain. I know just what I have to have, it's why I'm here today. So give me what I crave, and I'll be on my way. And what is that? I want a but it also violates professional ethics. Oh, screw that. I don't think you understand. I'm not requesting I demand. Don't give advice. Prescribe a drug. I want a hug. I understand your situation. I feel much the same. I ache for human contact. And I say that without shame. Well, I'm here, and I'm human, so... But there are many reasons I can't honor your request. So let's talk about your feelings and why you're so distressed. <laughs> I told you why I'm stressed and what will fix them. So open up those mother hugging arms. That yeah, stay in the back of the broomsticks. Make me.
now. All I need is a hug. <laughs> I want a hug more than anything. I haven't had one in so long. My husband's been in quarantine, COVID-19, which he tried not to pass on. But he gave it to our kids, and the babysitter quit. I can't take more of this shit. Oh my god. My mother lives with us, and she's got it too. I should be going. Uh -huh. Now I know what I need, and that's thanks to you. to the point, why wouldn't I? I'm a 19-year-old art student in the middle of Kansas. So what am I going to do with this noise inside my head and this bomb inside my heart? Everything I don't know is waiting inside me, ready to catch fire. And I don't want to lose that. I want to know how I keep it and how I make something out of it. You know, I look around and I see that things aren't fair. Things aren't equal. Things are so fucked up. I see you, injustice. I call you out. They, them, she, her, he, him, we are all us. We are all here. So heal the world from our secular sins, our bloody, bloody sins for everything that is beautiful and fair and just and, and, and I, I know you want me to stop talking. <laughs> I know I only have two minutes to do my two contrasting monologues, which I could jump right back into Juliet because by the way, I like Shakespeare, but I'm so full of rage right now. I don't think I could do Juliet. Maybe I should play King Lear instead. And maybe I will someday, but what am I gonna do now? I'm a 19 year old art student in the middle of Kansas and I wanna take a knee. I wanna listen. I wanna lift my voice and Damn it, somebody's gonna hear me. Now is the time to lock eyes and arms and begin the practice of justice. Now. Now. There's fossil evidence that popcorn has been around since at least 4700 BC. Sunsets. Now, the physics and the science of popcorn are more complex than I actually really care about. Not that there's anything wrong with physics or science. Spotify. It's just 
that what's important to me is the simplicity of popcorn. The royals. The chiefs. The magic. And how simple that magic is. I learned how to use my air fryer. See, what happens is that something hard and impervious to anything. My patio. The colonel. What's it's called? Thunderstorms. Yeah, I had to look that one up. It's rough shop. The laughter of my neighbor's kids. All you have to do is add some heat. Thunderstorms. Give it some warmth. Making art. And care. Seeing, Seeing other, other people's art. art. Recognize that there's something beyond that seemingly formidable hardness. My, my puppies. Taking a walk. Christmas trees. And the magic happens. It pops. Valentine's, Valentine's Day, Day trees. trees. And something tough and previously unbreakable. My, my puppies. Has become airy. Other, other people's puppies. puppies. Light. Everyone's getting puppies. puppies. Free. Taylor Swift. But it doesn't stop there. Kermit. That's where the magic continues. Robin Williams. It gets even more magical. Old people on TikTok. Like waves. Cooking with the family. Like dominoes. Oh, like that game where, where you put your head on someone else's belly and then someone puts their head on yours and the first person says ha and the next person says ha ha and then soon everyone's laughing. Toast. Toast. Light from street lamps glistening off the snow at night. Hearts in our windows to thank frontline workers. One kernel pops, and then another one does. New sheets bought with the Bed Bath & Beyond coupon. And another. Someone to recognize that behind the hus, the difficulty, Christmas, Christmas lights, sadness, Meisner, the despair, London, the awfulness, Rice Krispie Treats, there's hope, strawberries, and hope spreads. And that's magic.